Good evening, everyone. I'm Representative Brianna Tatone. I want to thank everyone for bestowing this honor to me this year. I'm so grateful for your support over the last two years on right to repair legislation. Thank you to Rep Ortiz for working with me on these bills as your passion and lived experience helped guide me in the process. The first year I ran this bill, I was looking to run a law that was all inclusive of repairing tech products. Everything from phones, laptops, household appliances, farm equipment, and electric wheelchairs. I really believe in the concept of right to repair and believe that everyone should feel like they own their stuff. If you can't fix the items you own, do you really own them? The 2021 legislation didn't make it through committee, mainly because of pressure from large tech companies and tractor manufacturers, which also took down the wheelchair repair aspect with it. I knew that wheelchair repair was a consequential part of the bill, and I was hoping this aspect was going to be a substantial enough part to convince the committee to pass the bill. I knew that this component of the bill would have a great impact on a community. So I brought this part back with Rep Ortiz as House Bill 1031. I led many stakeholder meetings to understand the topic and parse out how the legislation could work. Through that process, I learned that Medicaid was more complicated than I realized. The right to repair bill wasn't the answer to everything. After more conversations with CCDC and the repair folks and a great partnership with HICPUB, we examined ways we could address bureaucracy issues holding up repairs. Shout out to Joe Donnellan, Iris Hensey, and Alex Washelbaum for their hard work on this. We went through many iterations of House Bill 1290 before we all agreed on a solution, or so we thought. I secured a Republican Senate sponsor at the last minute, thank you, Senator Quorum, and we thought we were good. When the bill got to the Senate, we learned that the wheelchair repair manufacturers were going to oppose it, despite the final agreement we made originally. I was determined to uphold the most important part of the bill, accountability, something that has been lacking in this industry for a very long time. That was unacceptable to CCDC team, as well as Rep Ortiz and myself. We worked on a compromise that didn't really change the bill, but made the manufacturers back off and kept accountability intact. We were all relieved when the bill passed the Senate and the House concurred with our Senate amendments. It was always important to me to represent the people who I was working for. CCDC was entrusting me to fix this problem and we wanted to fix it right. I felt that we all did an outstanding job. Julie Riskin, Kenny Mastis, and all the folks who testified told compelling stories, which were hard to say no to. I can never really fully understand someone's lived experience. Similarly, many people will never understand my lived experience as a trans person. I have a new perspective of empathy since coming out, which has helped me genuinely appreciate the struggles and frustrations experienced by the wheelchair community and other marginalized groups. These are real problems we're trying to solve with these bills. These are meaningful and life-changing issues. I'm very proud of the work we did together to solve this problem. Know that I will be someone who will come to your side in the next fight. I've learned a lot working with you all and it's been a privilege to take this issue head on. Thank you to all the folks who advocated and lobbied to get these bills across. And thank you for this prestigious award. I will cherish this and it will remind me to always look for those who need an advocate to be there for them. Thank you so much again.